Welcome back. Now, the head of research at the financial derivatives company, Damilola Kibami, joins us now to talk us through today's burning economic issues. Good morning, Damilola. Thanks for coming on Good the program. Morning, DC. Well, let's begin with you uh, telling us the FDC's uh, uh, opinion about uh, the CBN's decisions yesterday. Did it come to you as a surprise? No, it actually didn't come as a surprise. Um, we were expecting that the CBN's uh, Monetary Policy Committee would leave rates unchanged, bearing in mind that um, two months ago in May, they reduced the monetary policy rate by um, 100 basis points to 12.5 percent and between May and now they've also done a couple of things so for instance the shift in the official rate to 318 era per dollar so obviously we're expecting them to wait and see the impact of recent policy adjustments on markets on sentiments on perception so it didn't come as a surprise um, to us and then um, again looking at the inflation numbers that came out um, for June which showed um, an increase, definitely it would have weighed on their decision. But right now, the MPC is of the opinion that we've done so many things. Let's wait to see um, what the impact would be and also what are the infl inflation expectations going forward. Are, are we going to continue to see an upward movement, especially now that the Naira has been adjusted? Definitely that will play a significant role on, um, on, on rates, on that decision. So it, it didn't come as a surprise to us. Uh, let's talk about uh, FAC allocations now. We saw an increase to 651.18 billion naira share to the federal, state and local government council as well as uh, other agencies. Now, what drove up the numbers? Well, the increase was actually due to higher oil prices in the month of June, bearing in mind that what the fact that is being shared in July is based on um, June's revenue. So there were, we had um, higher oil prices. The average oil price in June was about um, $40 um, compared to 32 in May, so that um, contributed to the increase. Also, we've seen improved collection of um, VAT, the value-added tax. We've seen improved collection of import and excise duties. So all this played a role in the increase in FAC um, allocations. And we expect that in subsequent months, we might see a further increase towards 700, 750 billion Naira. And that's because of the Naira adjustments, which actually took place uh, early in the month of July. So definitely, once you adjust your currency downwards, you would get more Naira revenue. And that is favorable for state governments, which depend on the allocations to meet the obligations. All right, talking about more revenue now, of course, the news of the COVID-19 vaccine is uh, providing some support for the crude oil market as we speak. Yes. Of course, we saw Brent trading at about $43 per barrel this morning. But apart from this, are there other developments that are driving up the markets, the crude oil markets at this time? Well, uh, in the global oil market, um, the supply and demand concerns are still what, is, what are driving um, the price and direction right now. And like you mentioned, yes, there are news of a possible vaccine being developed by the University of Oxford and that actually um, boosted oil prices. But nonetheless, we're still seeing a rising increase in infection cases, especially in cities that had earlier been reporting a decline. So these infection cases are increasing, they're actually dampening um, um, thoughts or anticipations of a recovery in energy demand. And this is because if there's a resurgence, or at least we've already even seen a resurgence in cases, if countries are being forced to impose lockdowns, it would affect economic growth, it would affect the demand for energy um, and, and other fuels. So right now, what is driving oil prices, the um, supply and demand um, dynamics, we know that OPEC and its allies, they've decided to ease their production cuts by about 2.2 million barrels. So we're going to see us from August 7.7 um, 7 million barrels per day. So whatever gains from the production gains that we're going to experience as as, as from August, this will be offset by the compensatory cuts that the likes of Iraq, um, Angola, and Nigeria will be forced to make because they mm -hmm. then comply with their cuts. So again, supply and demand dynamics, so depending on which carries a larger weight, um, we will determine the price of um, oil going forward. So what would be your projections for the prices? Uh, we think oil prices are still going to remain around the $43, $45 per barrel because right now the market is still heavily supplied with oil. Definitely the production cuts have had an impact so far, but again, they're reducing these um, um, production cuts. And again, we're seeing a pickup in demand, 
in China and other countries. But if, again, those infection cases continue to increase, there's that risk that is still dampening um, sentiment. So for the second half of 2020, oil prices may um, hover around the average of 40 to 45 dollars per barrel. Perhaps another commodity to talk about now is uranium, which has avoided a price drought. Of course, it's up 30 percent at the half year of 2020. Tell us what's responsible for this. Well, um, uranium, unlike other um, commodities, actually was able to weather um, the commodity route. And uranium is a unique metal. It's very radioactive. It's used um, as a fuel for nuclear reactors to generate electricity. It's used as a ballast even for ships. And because of the, the denseness of that metal, it can also be used as a counterweight for aircraft. It's used by the military for nuclear to make nuclear weapons, ammunition. And so it, had, it has various um, uses. But right now, it also, because of the reductiveness of that metal, if, it's, if one is exposed to it in large um, quantities, it's very um, detrimental to health. It can cause all sorts of cancer. And in Nigeria, we have some states where you can find uranium. So you can find uranium in Kano, you can find it in Cross River, in Aqua Ebom. But it's not yet fully, it's not even, we don't explore it like that in Nigeria compared to South Africa, Niger, and Namibia. So uranium is one of the few commodities that have actually weathered the storm. Um, obviously, we know gold too because of its safe haven um, appeal. And it has actually been recording an increase in price. So why do we need to pay more attention to this particular uh, commodity? Well, like I mentioned, um, there we have states where you can find um, uranium. And I've mentioned the uses mm -hmm. which um, uranium can be um, adapted to you, um, for, for, for use. But it, so definitely Nigeria can, we, ha we, have what it, we have it anyway, but do we have the technology to actually explore that? So it's one uh, avenue that the, um, the country can look into, and especially even for the military aspect. We know that there's a lot of insecurity that the government is battling with and whatnot. But again, it's caution. It's very radioactive. So it has, it's the kind of metal that has to be treated with extreme care. Now, another major issue to talk about is the fact that banks are now reducing the amount uh, customers can spend abroad using debit cards, and that's uh, in a bid to limit foreign currency settlement risk. Of course, we know that the country is facing uh, dollar shortages, perhaps because of a fall in oil prices. But tell us, what is the implication of this? Well, yes, we've seen a lot of banks um, reduce their Naira, I mean, their Forex limit on their Naira cards. Initially, you could um, withdraw as much as 30, I mean $3,000 in a month. So it has reduced from 3000 to 1000 and some banks have been now have reduced further to $500 um, dollars per month. And this is because of the Forex rationing. Well, we talked about oil prices. Forex supply has not improved, and the demand backlog is still there. And bear in mind that if right now, even international flights have not resumed. So definitely when that occurs, we are going to see a pickup in demand. So as long as your Forex supply is still being eroded, you are going to feel that pressure. Our reserves are slipping. Right now, it's about 36.1 billion. Very soon, it's going to cross or fall below the 36 threshold to about $35 billion. And the CBN is still intervening in the Forex market. It will get to a point in time that there's no improvement in the fundamentals that the CBN may have to tighten further or come up with other measures just to support the currency. And we're even beginning to see the pressure in the power market. The power market rate is now trading about 472 dollars per um, naira to a dollar rather. And one would expect that with the unification of rate, there should be a convergence. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the long term, that would happen. But because, again, our forex supply Investment flows are down, diaspora remittances are down. So because we're not receiving as much, so that pressure is there. And um, forex versioning will continue. We're just hoping that we're not going to have a repeat of what happened in 2016, where there were severe capital controls that were put in place. It's detrimental to um, the perception of um, what of what investors have about the country, and definitely it could affect sentiment about the economy. I'm sure everyone is hoping that doesn't happen. Now, so we're talking about the banks now. They are also restructuring 41% of the loans in the country after the CBN placed a moratorium on interest rates and principal uh, debt repayments, of course, to cushion the blow of lower oil prices and the fallout of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, tell us how this will impact their loan books, especially with their total loans that are up 21%. 
Yes, yeah, so what the CBN has done so far is just basically to try and cushion the impact of the COVID on, on banks, on economies, and even the impact of lower oil prices. And we know that the, um, the CBN has mandated banks to provide moratoriums on interest payments. So just basically to reduce the loan, the rate of loan defaults that are, that are that will occur in the financial system. And because if there's an increase in the non-performing loans, definitely would affect the performance of banks and the financial system as a whole. And we've also seen that the CBN is also going to um, give issue loans to about 36,000 um, small and medium scale enterprises and we know that the SMEs are the engine of growth of any economy so basically it's just to try and cushion the impact of, um, of the COVID of the contraction in economic activities on businesses. Now where are we in terms of the price movements for domestic commodity prices? Well for domestic commodity prices right now they're still sticky downwards and we're yet to um, enter into the um, harvest season but we know that at least towards the end of Q3, we should expect to see food prices ease um, downwards, and that is good, obviously, because it will impact on food infl inflation. However, because of the exchange rate adjustment, imported inflation is still going to continue to increase, and because Nigeria has a very high import content, it's still going to play a major role on the direction of commodity prices. All right, what about power? Are there any developments that we need to note in the power sector? Well, nothing major is occurring in the power um, sector. This is rainy season. You would expect to um, see um, higher power output, but it's still so far in July. Um, power, the average power output has still been ranging between um, 3,800 megawatts to about 3,920 megawatts, and the constraints are still predominantly gas and grid constraints. We haven't really witnessed any water constraints like that. So right now, we're still seeing average power output over at least, let's just approximately 4,000 megawatts. All right, I'd like to thank you, Head of Research at the Financial Derivatives Company, Damlola Kibami. Thanks thank for you, coming BC. on the program.